Good morning or good afternoon. This is Jose. And today I'm going to talk about a really interesting literary piece, which is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins. This is a short story in which she relates a story from a woman that got mad because of a whole situation. But let's get started and see what's coming, okay? Here you can see one image that represents perfectly the whole short story. Now, the question is, why did I choose this literary piece? Well, it's funny actually, because the truth is that one of my teachers in the English major programs, she had us reading that literary piece. And by that time, of course, as my English wasn't that um, proper, the level of English that I have by that time, I did not understand that much of this story. And uh, like, I didn't see, I didn't get the point of the whole story. And the teacher just um, had us reading that in order for us to share what we um, kind of perceived from the study. It wasn't about like to write anything or to analyze anything. And of course, I even read it twice. And when I, when I finally was in the classroom and most of my classmates were participating in, you know, like saying what they saw in this story. And then I saw that what I perceived, even though I read it twice, was so much different to what they were saying. And what I perceived didn't even have that much of sense. And what they did had actually sensed. And I was like, seriously. And I kept quiet. I, I didn't even participate in that um, discussion because like I didn't get the point. And also one of the thing is that um, I didn't know the reason why the, teachers, the teacher had us reading that literary piece. And then I found out that the, the teacher is a feminist. She is really hardcore on that. And now everything just makes sense to me. But let's get started. Let's start, sorry, in the whole story, okay? Now, Let's begin with Charlotte Perkins, which is the narrator, like which is the author of this story. And what we can say about her? Well, she was an American feminist, novelist, and a writer of short stories, poetry, and not fiction. She also was a lecturer for social reform. She was a utopian feminist and served as a role model for future generation of feminists because of her unorthodox concepts and lifestyles. She even has been inducted to the National Women's Hall of Fame. Her best remembered work today, of course, is the Yellow Wallpaper, where she impacted a lot of women all around the world with her story. Now, the characters that we have in here are, of course, the narrator, which is the protagonist. The narrator of the story is a young woman who recently gave birth, and she is also a writer who is restricted or is being kept away from that thing that she loves the most, which is writing, and is that is as a as a part of her treatment that does not, from my point of view, actually make any sense. Okay. And also we have Joan, which is the narrator's husband. She's also a patient. And most of the time he's taking care of uh, the narrator by telling her not to do any certain of activities as a part of her treatment, which is, doesn't make any sense because how come that a person just tells you hey you cannot do that things that you like the must just like that 
it doesn't make any sense. And also we have also Jenny, which is Sean's sister. And he works as a housekeeper, La Chopa, how I call her, because mostly she does most of the job in the bear and she takes care of the home, right? Now we have the themes, like along the story, we have repression. Why? And it's because the narrator was restricted from doing certain activities that she loved. She loved writing and just her husband just came and said, hey, you cannot write anything. You just cannot. And that's repression because whenever you tell someone that stop doing something that that person likes the most, it's just asking them to forget like one part of themselves and forget who they are, basically. That's how I see it. And also we see the gender role in marriage because as we saw in the story, men are dominant and women are supposed to follow and be silent and be obedient to anything that their um, husbands like claims or demands or asks. Right, and also we have mental health as a one of the most important themes because, like, um, the narrators just had a lot of problems with her mental health. Health. I mean, she was struggling with it, and it got worse when the, the her husband told him not to do anything, and she was just basically locked in a room just to stay there doing nothing. Like, <laughs> it's obviously one person could go crazy and I don't blame them, right? That's what's going to happen for sure. And now we have in the setting that the story of course takes place in a large vacation home in the countryside um, where John takes the narrators there for a few days as a part of her treatment. Besides that, Jones claims that the there are men working on their house in the country in the in the in the city, sorry, in the city. And that's the two reasons why the main setting of the story is the mansion, the house. We have that the story is told in first person point of view. As the narrators is speaking first person, telling the story in a journal, where she includes her feelings and thoughts and everything regarding her. That's how we can tell that it's absolutely third person point of view. Okay, now we have the plot which is like a map, as we already know, of the events that, that happened all along the story. And the first one we have here as this position, that is where the story begins. And it begins as the, when the narrators just describes the new mansion in which she is at now, in, ch in which she is going to pass some days. In that same descriptions, she relates how much she disliked that place by uh, say, saying that that house it seems more sort of, of uh, like a haunted home. And that how we can see her dislike regarding that. And also the uh, rising action where the narrator decide not to stop writing, even though her husband asked her to stop. She uh, continues writing because it's one of the most, one of the things that she likes the most, and she would just not stop doing it. And uh, she started writing in a secret journal and keep with it. And also we have the climax. When the narrator 
as a be as a passing most of the time in a room where there is a yellow white wallpaper, she gets upset with it as she um, stares at it for a long time in the day. And also, we can see as well the following action where the narrator now completely identify with a woman in the wallpaper as she stares so much time on it. She get upset with it and she claims that she um, see a woman prowling and then she uh, gets uh, crazy, let's put it like that, and her husband discovers her and collapses in a shot, which is not bad, I mean, which is not, uh, which is not uh, a surprise since he takes her over there so she can heal her mental illness. And now she is even crazier than, or more crazy than she was before, right? And she keeps crawling right over his fallen body. Also, we have the literary analysis. As the main idea, we have that the yellow wallpaper is a literary work that perfectly relates some place and experience lived by a person, in this case, the narrator, as I've been saying. And also, it is told in a journal where a person just relates everything how unpleasant was that experience lived in that home at that certain moment. Also, some of the evidence on how unpleasant the experience was for the narrator or Perkins in this case, because I have more than one reason to believe that this story is just based on the author, on the author, because Charlotte Perkins just went through the same story and it's not a coincidence, right? And uh, some of the evidence of that, of how unpleasant was the experience for her when she started descri describing the mansion, what it's going to be her new home now. She even um, compared it to a haunted house, which is uh, how we can tell that she's not happy to be there right and also the yellow wallpaper is a literary piece that works as a journal as i already said to relate some pleasant experience lived by a young woman and some literary devices are used to give a stronger sense of the story such as irony sarcasm and even metaphors when she similes as well which she compares uh, the hum with a haunted hum. And that was all. Thank you so much for your attention. And bye-bye.